Well, uh, tonight, Milt Hinton and I are going to have a short conversation about jazz and culture, a conversation we want you to become part of by not only listening, but by asking questions you may have concerning Milton's attitudes about jazz as more than entertainment. We all know that jazz is a wonderful music, but it is also a music that reflects and comments about a rich culture, a culture that has made major contributions to the United States. We have all heard by now the cliche that jazz is the only uniquely American art form. Perhaps, but for me, jazz is also an attitude about a people's longing and now active struggle for freedom and dignity. And it is this attitude that Milton has agreed to address this evening. So with that, I'd like to start off by saying that Milton is not only a jazz giant, but he is also a visual historian, someone who has documented his life in music in a noble effort called Baseline. Little, little plug for Milton's uh, book. And if you have the book, you know what I mean. And if you don't have the book, you should. And copies are available this evening. They are in the hands of Milton's wife, who, if you don't already know, has been by Milt's side for over 40 years. At uh, 51, she corrects me quickly. And, uh, And uh, she is uh, obviously central to uh, Milton's uh, life. So I'd like you to meet her. So Mona Hinton, would you just stand up and say hello to everybody? Uh, Dan Morgenstern, in his introduction in Baseline, stated that this book, quote, is also a slice of revealing personal and social Afro-American history keenly observed. From the time Milton was witness to a hanging when he was eight years old to this very moment sitting among us, he has been a keen observer of life and he has given us an opportunity to be part of his world. As co-chair of the jazz program under the National Endowment for the Arts, as a participant in developing their oral history project, as a teacher, husband, father, grandfather, Milton has been unswerving in his determination to advance the cause of jazz and African-American contributions to the American scene. So with that, I'd like to bring Milton up, and he and I are going to have a short conversation. Milton Hinton. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming. And I got my security blanket here. First, I'd like to s just start out by saying a few things about me. I've got a young man here, Mark, uh, that was at the International Society of Bases. This is a, this is a little less bass player of all of us. And he's fine. And he's marvelous. He was at, he was, last year he was at the International Society of Bases Convention and I had the chance to work with him a little bit. And he just asked me if I would, uh, he's got to go to Sunday school real soon, so uh, he's got to leave early. So he asked me if I would do something for him. So with your kind of permission, I'd like to tell you something about me and do it for Mark. And it goes something like this. I was born in Mississippi in the year of 1910, we moved up to Chicago, and I never went back again. I played with Cab and Louie, with Doc and Streisand too, with Prez and Clark and Dizzy and Alan and all these other fellas too. I jammed with Benny Goodman, with Basie, Duke and Earl. I toured England with Bing Cosby, and the Middle East with Pearl. In 1939, I met Mona, a 
that's my bride. And nothing's been the same ever since. I fell in love, she blew my mind, took the money, went shopping, and I've been broke ever since. <laughs> I work with Jackie Gleason, played rags with Hubie Blake. I've been to the White House several times, and that's icing on the cake. I even strolled with Freddie Keppard and Tiny Parham, too. Now I'm the oldest bass player standing. I got shoes as old as you. I've had a wonderful time when I was in my prime. Now, Mona, take me home. <laughs> All right, Dawson, thank you, all That was written. Yeah. And, you know, you, you said you hadn't heard that before. That was written for me by Dave Berger, the, the co-writer of my book. He's a young man that came around me when he was 15 years old, and he's now chairman of the Soci Sociology Department at Temple University and one of my dearest friends.